In this video we are going to make a gliding iPhone animation and both of them are just not going to touch and this is what we're going to be creating. So I hope you're ready because we're already getting started. I'm right here in our scene and we've got an empty and an iPhone. Now of course uh, we need to animate this empty but we want to animate this on a path and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to press shift A curve and add a path right over here. We have to manipulate this path in order for it to look interesting. So I'm going to take this part G and X and bring it all the way over there. And maybe just a straight line is good enough. If we do want to have something else, we can also take this G and X, G and X, maybe turn on proportional editing, G and Z, and maybe have it go in a slight curvature like this. And then right over here, we're going to press on this one, press E and X, and now it should be going straight. Now I want another one of these as well. So I'm going to press Shift D, R, Z, 180. I'm going to turn it around exactly. And I'm going to bring this one right over here because at this point I want all the iPhones to almost touch each other. So I'm going to select this empty then I'm going into the object constraints tab right over here because we want to have it follow this path but first we need to add a constraint in order to get that to work. So right here I'm going to click on follow path and select this picker tool then select the path. And as you can see it should be set to the beginning of the path. If that is not the case for you simply press on N to open up the tool menu and set the location to zero for everything because if it's not it might be somewhere else. Luckily you have this blue dot line that shows you where the iPhone is. Anyway you can just set it to zero and then everything will work out fine. Now if you play with this the iPhone is basically not moving along with the tangent of the curve. So if we say follow curve then it will but now everything is turned around. So all we have to do now is go to the Z minus 90 and set it to zero and in this case it should follow along with the curvature of our path. And that's very nice because now we can actually animate this to look good. But before we actually do that, I want to hide this path. I'm going to select this iPhone in its entirety like this, select the empty as well, shift D and X, and I'm going to move this one to the side. And as you can see, there is a, a constraint going on here and we want to remove that. So click on the X button and then it will be moved to somewhere over here. That's not a problem. We are simply going to add another constraint, follow path, select the picker tool and select the other path that we created. And of course, now it is all offset over here. So I'm going to set it to zero. And now if we click on follow curve, everything should work out just fine. And we get both of these iPhones following along on a curve. So basically we want to animate four things. We want to animate the path, we want to animate the empty, and we want to animate the camera. But we also want to animate a separate empty that will connect both of these iPhones together so we can rotate them without having to spend extra time getting the animation right for the both of them. Starting from the offset zero, let's say, maybe even more, like 16. Let's press I, or no, you know what, Six, uh, zero is, is fine. Press I and maybe we want this to continue onwards. So let's set this to frame 96 and I will increase or decrease in this case the offset until we are somewhere over here. And then I will press I. Now I will select this iPhone, set this to minus 110 and it should be over there. Press I and then go back to frame zero and set this to zero. And now we should have those iPhones animating towards each other and basically they are just sliding past each other without anything happening. It doesn't look very interesting as of yet. So the most important thing is to select both of these empties and go over here, control tab to go into the graph editor. And then we get both of these offset lines. And if we can select both of them, that means that we can change the animation at the same time. So it's going in fast. And here I want it to be really slow. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag this upwards until it's almost horizontal. Now it's happening way too fast, of course. So I want that to occur somewhere like right over here, especially as they cross. So the way to do it uh, would be to bring this line down just a little bit so they are already faster over there. And they are slowing down too, too quickly. So I'm going to have to move this to the right side, bring this down as far as possible, something like this. And here is where the slow motion occurs. So I'm going to bring this down ever so slightly because we do want them to continue moving. There you go. Actually right over here I want the animation to be slower but I don't think that we are reaching that level right now. And that's very annoying. So I'm simply going to press on offset right over here and I'm going to do the same for this empty. And I'm going to select both empties again. And then I will take this line and bring it to the side and down. So let's see what it looks like. Now it's slowing down at the right, the right stop. I'm going to bring this down ever so slightly because I want to continue like this. 
and then it should move quickly once again. So like this. And I want that to happen right over here. So once again, I'm going to press I over here. I'm going to press I on the other empty as well. Select both of them and this one should go down. I'm going to take this as Y0 and then it should be scaled on the horizontal axis. And then I will take this one, set the handle type to free, select the right handle and bring it down. So it kind of speeds up fast again. So like this. And there you have it. We have very quickly the iPhones coming in, slowing down and moving past each other. And that's the first part of this animation. Now we have to make the rotations. Let's go back to the timeline and right over here, we want to have a rotation animation that's occurring. How am I going to do it? It's quite simple actually. I'm going to set this to frame 33 and I will click on K and I will add a rotation keyframe. Then somewhere over here, I want this rotation to be like this, R and X. Press I, then it's moving past each other in a pretty slow pace and then it's moving outwards. So let's turn this back again, like so. And this looks very janky, but we're going into the graph editor. So I'm going to select all of the rotations right over here, lock them all off except for the X, Y and Z. And let's select all of them, A and dot. And now we can see what's happening. We have the Y and the X that are actually doing something. So let's maybe just turn off the Z as well and open up the Y and X. Now these are our keyframes. And if we want to have the rotation start a whole lot earlier, it will be done. We can set this to the left to frame one. And now it's already rotating a bit earlier and things will start to look a bit better as well. Now what we want to do is actually scale up this Y value. And why is it the Y value? The reason for that is because we have some transformations right over here. We have some uh, minus on the X and I'm going to select the entire Y range on the top. So this is the highest part of our animation. I'm going to press S and X in order to scale it up and I will scale it to the side as far as possible. So let's see somewhere over here. And then we have the slow motion. And the thing that I don't like about this animation is the fact that it's kind of standing still exactly over here. And the way to fix that would be to take this handle and to drag it upwards ever so slightly. And now it will never be completely standing still. Now we need to do approximately the same thing for this one. So in this animation, our rotation should be at the max level. So let's select this keyframe, press I, press I. Then go to the frame where this keyframe is located at, which is frame 49. I'm going to select this one again. And now I'm going to rotate it something like this probably. So press I and let's see in the other keyframe where it ends. So let's select it. And the last keyframe is located at 103. So we're going to do that once again, R and X. And let's maybe make a keyframe like this. Of course, we also have to check on the other one what our curve looks like and it looks like this. So I'm going to scale this outwards S and X until it kind of follows the same path of the other one. And that should be something like this. I'm not going to bother too much about the end of this animation because I'm going to be filming it from somewhere over here anyways. So maybe this one can be set to the side just a little bit more. The same goes for this one. And now the iPhones will practically almost touch. And I do think that that gives us a nice little effect. They shouldn't intersect. So make sure that that doesn't happen. And now I want them to rotate around each other. And basically what we want to do is make sure that both of these paths have an origin point that is on a different location. So shift S cursor to select it right over there. Object set origin to 3D cursor. And right now the origin for this path is on the outer end of this path. And we're going to do the same for this one. So select the last vertice, shift S cursor to select it. Go back into object mode, object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now if we select both of these paths and press shift S, cursor to select it then it should place the cursor right in the middle between these two and that's exactly what we want and now i'm going to add a empty so shift a empty and i'm going to add a sphere i've got the spherical one right over there i will select this path first then this path Control p on the spherical empty keep transform and now if i rotate this around the telephones will rotate as well and that's exactly what we want because somewhere over here we also want a rotation animation to start occurring. So I'm going to take this, press I, and somewhere over here until it speeds up again. So that should be like frame 82. And I'm actually going to be rotating this like so. Press I, and then it's moving away again. And maybe we can even have them rotate as they move away. There you go. One thing that's annoying me greatly is that they are not really moving along together. And I'm basically going to solve this problem by selecting this empty 
and playing around with the final keyframe because it is not moving fast enough. I'm simply going to bring this upwards until we can see that they are approximately aligning. And now, as you can see, things are going absolutely fine. So they are moving in. There you go. Pretty interesting looking if you ask me. Now, we could play around with the graph editor for the spherical empty as well. We're basically rotating it only on the x-axis, so close everything off, except for this one, x the rotation and unlock it. Press A and dot, and now we can see how the animation is taking place. Uh, it's looking like this. We can maybe increase this one to the right, and perhaps this one should be a little bit faster. So I'm going to make it more of a sharp S-curve. So now all we need to do is light this baby up. So I'm going to bring the camera right over there, Control alt 0 and I'm going to place it somewhere over here. I'm going to set the millimeter to, I'm going to set the focal length to 80 millimeters, something like this, G and Z. Let's see what it looks like for now in render mode. So let's set this to cycles, GPU, bring in an HDRI. I'm going to bring in a Canary Wharf maybe to decrease the light. We'll turn on the film transparent as well. All right, naturally we need a supporting light, an area lamp, and increase the power of this. And I also want both of these phones to have a background. So I'm going into the materials, go to the screen LED right over there, go to the shader editor. In the shader editor, connect this up to the emission color, increase the strength until we get our screen back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this empty right over here, shift S, cursor to select it, and I will bring in a curve circle. And then the curve circle should be scaled up, and I'm going to select the camera right over here, go to the object constraints, and turn on follow path, select the curve we just created. Now of course it might be offset just a little bit, so go to item, set all of this to zero, and now our camera is on the curve, and it will move along on the curve as predicted. However, we also need to make sure that we're looking at the correct position for these iPhones the entire time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Simply bring in another empty and it's going to be an arrow. So I'm going to scale this up because it's easy to see. And I will take the object constraints in the camera and add a new one. I'm going to select track two, select the picker tool and select this arrow. And now at whatever time we are looking at this, it should be viewing our arrow. So no matter where we are taking this arrow, our camera should be looking at it. So if we change the angle of this curve, then we have a pretty interesting looking animation right there. So maybe right over here, we want our camera to be located at this position. So I'm going to press I on the curve, I'm going into the camera and I'm going to press I on offset. But I'm also going to press I on the arrow. So we need to place three keyframes on three different items. Right over here in the beginning, perhaps what I want to do is make sure that our curve rotation is somewhere over here. And maybe the camera itself should be moved on the curve over here. We can take the curve, scale it up. Uh, so press I on this one, press I on the follow path and press I on this arrow. So basically I'm going to delete this arrows empty because I find it a bit too hard to work with. I'm going to delete it. And I'm actually going to have the camera focus on this spherical empty the entire time. So like this, and now it's moving a bit more natural as well. Uh, let's click on the camera. Let's see if we can make some improvements in the graph editor for our animation itself. So right over here, maybe it should be a little bit faster in the beginning. No, it definitely should not. Maybe it should be a bit slower. Yeah, there you go. And I actually want to have this continue onwards. So maybe we can add like a modifier. So let's bring in the cycles, set it to repeat with offset. And now let's see what it does. Very interesting actually. It looks like a robotic arm type camera motion. Something like this. I actually think that looks very interesting. You know what, play around with this. At the end of the game, you can also like turn this off and maybe just have this be the animation. So have a look at the iPhone and then it will be done as well. Uh, I might be using this Cycles one because I like the way that's moving around. It looks very robotic. All right, so I'm just going to give that a try. You can do whatever camera motion you like. I already explained how to make the iPhone animation. Now basically all you have to do is make sure that it looks good on the screen. Make sure that your lighting looks well and pick a background that we made before in a different part of this course. And if you enjoyed this video, click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coupe. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.